Hi, everybody. We're going to create uh, a couple of radar graphs today. A radar graph is uh, a way of visualizing uh, outcomes or variables, some uh, the mean, for instance, typically of a set of variables where they're scaled so that they're uh, comparable to each other, and then they're visualized on a like a spider graph or a radar plot. We'll see it in a second. And it's a compact visual way of displaying in particular whether there are differences between groups in the variables and which variables have differences. So uh, it's uh, used occasionally to denote, uh, to, to easily communicate uh, differences uh, by, by group for a set of variables. So uh, we're going to uh, use the script uh, called Radar Graphs. The first thing we're going to do is simulate a data set that will have uh, 10 variables or so, uh, and some will differ by uh, group. We'll call them a treatment group and a control group to be like a randomized control trial. And we'll have some outcome variable that will differ by the treatment and control group. And then a bunch of covariates that uh, in this data set we're simulating will not vary by treatment group and control group. So we'll assume that they'd be like our test of balance for the treatment and control group that the covariates are the same. So we'll load a couple of packages, clear our uh, data set. We're going to, in order to simulate this, uh, we're going to set a seed so that we'll uh, be able to replicate exactly the uh, data that we simulate. We'll have uh, 5,000 in the treatment group and then 5,000 in the control group for a sample of uh, 10,000. I'm sorry, there'll be 5,000 uh, in the treatment and control groups, and then we'll have a pre and post period. But for our radar graph, we'll only be looking at the post period. So we'll have uh, 10,000, uh, 5,000 observations in the post period, uh, some treatment, some control. So let's do that. Now, uh, you all have this uh, script elsewhere, so I won't go through this script uh, too, uh, too quickly. We create a data frame of certain variables, then we add an ID variable, then we create that as the post uh, data set, then we create a pre uh, uh, data set, um, uh, post equals zero, uh, and then uh, the other way around, I'm sorry. Then we define a treatment effect, and we create a uh, pre and post outcomes, and then we'll uh, make the treatment effect, which normally we wouldn't observe the treatment effect, of course, we'll make that be uh, missing uh, for the um, uh, post equals zero period. So that's, uh, we now have a data frame. Let's take a quick look at it. It's 10,000 observations, uh, treatment group zero or one, whether they're compliers or not, uh, whether uh, they're female, uh, some dummy variable, education, age, health, income, uh, an indicator for whether they're observed in the pre or post period, uh, the ID variable, the treatment effect, which normally we wouldn't observe, and uh, the outcome, uh, both for the pre period and the post period. So that's our data set. It's uh, 12 uh, variables. Uh, now we're going to install a couple of packages that will be used for making radar graphs. One is called the MFSB package, and the other is called ggradar, which is an add-on, uh, uh, I think not yet on CRAN, so we're going to install it from the GitHub repository of this uh, person, Ricardo Bion, who apparently has, uh, has made it, if that's uh, hopefully his, his name. Um, so we'd unhash tag these to uh, install them. I've already installed them, so I'm not going to uh, install them. So I'm going to load them with my library command and uh, they're loaded. We're also gonna load this scales package. We'll see in a second what it, what it does. So we're first gonna use ggradar to create the uh, uh, graph. So uh, we have two um, commands. The first command is gonna create a data frame called xx. And then the second is going to uh, do the plot of XX. And the GG radar is pretty simple. We're gonna do a GG radar for XX. We're gonna tell it not to label the grid lines because it has this uh, weird automatic labeling of zero, 50%, 100%. Uh, as if they were the percentage categories that we're in, which uh, doesn't always make sense. We're going to add a title to the plot. We're going to tell the title to have font size 18, and we're going to tell the uh, plot to have the plot title position 
be flush with the left of the plot. Otherwise, it centers it and it looks a little odd the way the graph is. So this theme command is just going to change where the plot title is uh, centered. Uh, so that's the ggradar command, pretty, pretty simple. Uh, and you can look up the help for ggradar to see all the options. There's 100 options uh, in this command that this uh, um, R user has, uh, has coded in. Um, it's, it's quite flexible. So, but before that, we need to create this XX data set. So let's see what that is. Well, we'll take the data frame of 10,000 observations. We'll just have post equals one. So we'll filter it to 5,000 observations uh, that are in the post period. We'll drop all the variables that aren't really variables. So the ID variable, now that we've filtered the post variable, we don't need it anymore. This treatment effect, as I said, we don't observe, so it's not a variable that we would ever observe. It was just used for constructing the data set. So we pipe that into uh, rename. Uh, I think by default, uh, the group has to be called group uh, for ggradar. Uh, I may be wrong about that, but just to be sure, I recoded the treatment variable to be called group variable. Uh, then I mutated it to be a character uh, vector. Um, and then I uh, then I uh, uh, use this scales package to rescale the groups to be uh, to rescale all the variables except for the group variable to be on the interval zero one. Uh, and ggradar seems to require that that everything be on the interval zero one. So that has to be rescaled to be on the interval zero one. So any number, uh, the um, this rescale package finds its minimum and maximum and then converts all the numbers to be between zero and one. Uh, and then we're going to group by the group, the treatment and control group. And then we're going to summarize the syntax is with, uh, from Dipler. We're going to summarize across all these variables from comply to outcome. Uh, so these are the, the 10 or 8 uh, variables that we're interested in. And we're going to use the mean function uh, that's just a base R. I just put this in there to you know, show you that this was base R, the mean function in base R. Now, if there were missing values uh, in our observations, our, our data set doesn't have any missing values. We'd probably want to include the na.rm uh, equals true to remove missing values uh, from there. Uh, so we create XX and let's take a look and see what XX looks like. So there's XX. We see that it's just two observations because we, we calculated the mean of every variable by group, 0, 1. And, uh, and there's our mean observations for all of these things. Now that we have XX, we can do the GD radar plot. Um, and there's our GD radar uh, uh, plot. So let's uh, zoom this so we can see it uh, bigger. So here's our title off to the flush to the left. And we see that everything is the same for the two groups, except for the outcome, which is quite a bit larger for the treatment group for, for one. So that's one way to create this uh, radar graph. Our second way is to use the uh, command uh, radar chart in the FMSB package. And for that, we also have to do some processing. So we're going to create three data sets and then merge them. The first data set is going to have the means of the variables that we're interested in. So we take data frame, we filter uh, as before, we drop the variables that we don't want, we group by the treatment variable, uh, we calculate the means, but then we're going to turn this treatment variable into a um, character variable with the names control and treatment. We could have done this earlier with the other one too, probably should do that. Uh, and then we're gonna uh, convert that the, that uh, group variable into uh, row names. Um, and so when we run this, we'll see we have mean D now that looks just like, uh, just like uh, XX, except notice it has one fewer variable. And that's because we converted the uh, treatment and control variable to be row names. So they're here, control and uh, treatment. Um, and then we can uh, create two other variables, so the max and the min. So notice the difference, the GG radar converts everything, the, our code converts everything to be on the interval 0, 1. Uh, the uh, radar chart, we're going to give it what the minimum and maximum is for each one of these variables. So then we're going to put all those together in a particular order, the maximum, the minimum, and the mean uh, for the two. And then we're going to plot that. So we'll run the whole thing uh, again. And there's our, um, 
uh, radar chart for the, uh, I didn't add a title to this. Uh, we see that the outcome here is, uh, uh, is uh, different. All the others are the same. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of uh, uh, insight. Again, you know, lots of things can go wrong with these radar graphs. Uh, they're very finicky, uh, but uh, once you get the basic syntax down, you can replicate a basic radar graph pretty easily.